please do me a favor. Don't do the following when raising your bilingual, trilingual or multilingual children. In this video, I'll be sharing five things that you should never do when raising your multilingual children. Whether you're using the OPOL, the MLAH, the 2P2L, the TNP or the OSOL method, these are no-go's for anyone raising a bilingual or multilingual child. So buckle up and hit that like button to support more multilingual families. Let's get started. Stop trying to build a relationship to your children in several languages at once without having a plan. If you're raising a multilingual child, speaking multiple languages without having a plan can do more harm than good. It's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping it sticks. Instead, choose one language to be your relationship language, the one you focus on the most. Ideally, your strongest language or your native tongue. Spend about 80% of your time speaking that language with your child and use the remaining 20% to read books in other languages as well if you're proficient in that language. Seek out communities, schools and other resources to help immerse your child in all of the languages that your child is learning. Just to be clear, this doesn't mean that other people can't or shouldn't speak simultaneously other languages to your child. They should, if uh, they are proficient in them. Remember, building a strong relationship with your child and your main language is crucial before introducing additional languages yourself. Once your child has a solid foundation in your chosen language, you can gradually increase their exposure to other languages using methods like TNP or OSOL. However, keep in mind that introducing new languages should be done with careful consideration of your unique family situation. So, no more language soup here, friends. Take the time to develop a well thought out plan for your child's language learning journey. It'll be worth it in the long run and I'm also around if you need help. So check out my website if you need more help with that. Stop being insecure. This one is easier said than done, I know, but if after I say what I have to say, you still feel insecure, you seriously need to contact me to help you gain confidence once and for all. Let's talk about a common struggle when raising multilingual kids. Picture this, your little one is already chatting away, but sometimes they surprise you or your child surprises you by speaking in a different language, maybe the majority language. As a parent, it's natural to want to accommodate to your child's preferences and switch to the language your child is using. But hold up a minute, you're the one in charge of this multilingual journey. You know where you're going, or I hope so, and what you want to achieve. So don't let your child's behavior throw you off course. Be the rock in the surf, the boss that sets the rules. If you've decided that language X is your main language, the one that you want to build a strong bond with your child in, then stay persistent. Even if your little one protests, cries or speaks in another language, don't give in. Stand firm and confident in your language choice. The more resolute you are, the easier it will be for your child to follow your lead. I never said that it was easy. In the beginning, it's hard. It's, it's, it's a bumpy road in the beginning, but it gets better. Trust me, it does. Don't let anyone make you feel insecure. Question your choices once you have a plan. You're the parent and your natural authority will shine through if you stay strong. Your kids will look up to you and emulate your behavior. So whatever you do, don't stop exposing your child to your target language. Got it? Don't stop exposing your child to your target language. Don't you dare giving up even if others complain. Don't speak the majority language if you're not proficient in that language. This applies only to some of the families, but this is also very important. And I see this mistake happening over and over and over again because parents are scared. Let me explain it. Reading books in that language is okay if you feel confident in your pronunciation, but don't give up using your native language in favor of 
poorly spoken majority language because you fear your child might not keep up in school. Instead, seek out immersive experiences, native speakers, play dates, and schools to help your child naturally acquire the majority language while you prioritize using your native language. It's crucial to devote your whole time, and if that's not possible, at least 80 to 90 percent of your energy to build a strong relationship with your child in your strongest language. If you're unsure if this applies to your situation, feel free to leave a comment and we can assess your case. Research shows over and over again that children that have strong first languages or a strong first language have it so much easier later and their whole development, their overall development is much healthier than uh, if a child learns a little bit of every language and doesn't have a solid foundation in the first languages. Stop ignoring the importance of audiobooks. Babies, toddlers and young children learn languages primarily through their ears. However, many people overlook the value of audio resources such as audio stories and audio books, which can be an excellent and are an excellent supplement to human interaction. While they can replace human interaction, they are a valuable tool for language learning. Today in the morning, uh, an old man approached me at the bus station and needing help buying the ticket. He, he was impressed with my German accent and assumed that I was from Germany. However, I am actually Swiss Ecuadorian and have never lived in Germany. My ability to speak German is due to my childhood habit of listening to audiobooks in both Spanish and German. I listened to the same stories repeatedly and even memorized the accents, the words, the phrases. Do the same with your child. That's such a powerful thing. Audiobooks are an extremely powerful language learning tool that is often underestimated in schools and by multilingual families. I strongly advise introducing the habit of listening to stories in your home. It can significantly enhance your child's language ability without you having to put more and more effort and time in it. I use Audible at home, Spotify, YouTube Music and Tony's. If you struggle to find audiobooks in your target language, consider recording yourself reading stories or even telling stories about your family or any topic of your interest. Play these recordings in the car before bedtime, during bath time, or at your convenience. Your children will benefit significantly from hearing your voice or the voice of the grandmother or the voice of the aunt and improving at the same time their language skills. Last but not least, stop blaming your child. When a child is not speaking or using language as expected, it is often not the child's fault. Children tend to mirror the language experience they have. It may be hard to accept it, but that's the reality. Instead of assuming that there is something wrong with your child, consider evaluating the quality and quantity of their language exposure. As a German, as a second language teacher, I found it helpful to record my lessons and watch them later. This allowed me to reflect on my speaking style and be intentional and clear when communicating. I recommend doing the same thing at home. Uh, record yourself, for example, during breakfast or any other interaction that you have with your children and then listen to the recordings. Ask yourself questions like, Am I speaking consistently in only one language at a time? Am I mixing languages? Do I use a rich variety of vocabulary words? Am I speaking too quickly or maybe unclearly? The better the quality of language input your child or your children receive from you, your partner, the daycare, the grandparents and the school, the better their language output will be. This is the reason why I say do not speak a language to your child freely if you don't master that language because your children are going to learn mistakes and are going to learn like a, a bad quality 
are gonna have the bad quality input and you don't want that. You want to have the highest input so that your kids can copy you, can, can emulate you and therefore also reach a high level. It's much better to just use books or, or resources that have a high quality and expose your child to those. Remember, it's not about blaming the child, but rather taking responsibility for providing the best language environment possible. And I know in some cases it's really not possible. And if you still want to, to, to help your child in some ways, then, then just you know, focus on books. That, that's like the best thing. Focus on books and audiobooks. Nothing else. Don't do it yourself. If you're not like, if your level is not up here, stop it. Stop doing that. So if you, if you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm Andrea Bright Mozart. I'm a teacher passionate about language learning and multilingualism. Uh, I help parents and students become multilingual fast and with success. So if you're interested in more content, please subscribe to my mailing list. All the links are down below. Next, I recommend watching this video to avoid more common pitfalls when raising bilingual or multilingual children. Keep on doing a great job and visit my webpage www.multilingual.family if you want to take a course, book a consultation or coaching session with me. Take care and talk to you soon.